morning, Cornerstone Christian Center. We welcome you. Thank you for joining us live today. We're so glad you could be with us. We just pray that today would be a blessing to you and that you would be able to give God all that you've got today. Whether you're sitting, standing, whatever you do, give a shout out to Jesus with us. We welcome you. Through you, I can do anything. me the strength he does nothing is impossible through you blind eyes are open strongholds are broken i am living by faith no nothing is impossible Follow us on all the social medias. We are very with it with that. But we just want to welcome you today. Thank you. We're not alone today, amen.
look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever be reminded of how I've been set free? is a cross that bears the burden where another died for me there is another
that's exactly our prayer today. Lord, that we come to you because we know that you're with us. Lord, that you're fighting on our behalf. Lord, that is what you said to us through scripture. Lord, it says here in Isaiah 43, Lord, as you speak to us, but now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by my name. You are mine. Lord, that is what you said over us. We belong to you, so therefore we do not fear. Lord, all these things that would, they would press in on all sides against us. Lord, we call for the peace of God that transcends all understanding, Lord, to be upon us today. Lord, upon every single one of us here, Lord, on every single one of us that is watching, Lord, that you would just, by your spirit, Lord, that we would feel that peace come upon us. Lord, that it would wash over us. Lord, there would be something that's different and burn away. And all of those things, all those cares, all that anxiety that we've been holding on to would fall away and we would come closer to you and to your presence. Lord, we pray that today, Lord, over our church, God, that each and every one would have a, a new impartation of who you are in their lives. Lord, we pray that today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you at home. We are so glad you're with us. Uh, stay with us as we have a, a word from our pastor. Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm so glad that, that we've our chance to come and worship through uh, our online service today, and so glad that you tuned in. It's exciting that we can provide ministry, but it's challenging because we don't get to see your smiling faces and get to, to be close to our church family. We just had uh, Debbie and Brian stop in the office just for a moment. It was so good to see them, to talk to them, to hear their voices, and just like uh, them, I'm looking forward to being with you and seeing you and talking to you. At some point in the future, get a chance to hug your neck, tell you how much I love you. Until then, let me tell you how much I love you. I am so thankful for you today. Um, I really believe that in this service that we are uh, releasing today, that God has a, a blessing in store for you. And I want you to prepare your hearts to receive it and just be ready to, to just embrace the, the blessing of God in your life. As we continue in our worship through giving today, I, I want to refresh all of our memories with this truth. Our faithful obedience matters to God. Now, in recent days, the last few days, we've been trying to work out the challenges that seem to be ours uh, to, to figure out how we're going to walk our way through this time, and we recognize how important that our the faithful giving of our people is. And so we thank you so, so much that you understand that it's God who has given us the teaching about being faithful. We aren't given all the same talents or gifts or abilities, but the one thing we can offer back to God, all of us, is our faithfulness to him. So this virus crisis it's affecting all of us in different ways and different impact, but it has changed our normal. Our normal, or what was our normal, is no longer. And this thing is impacting our lives. It's impacting our families. It's impacting all of our daily life. But I want to remind you, it is but for a moment. This too will pass, and we'll be on the other side of it, and we'll be able to say that we had the Lord's Lord it with us the whole time as we were going through it. I just, again, let me just say our faithfulness to God, it matters. And our faithfulness to God is for our lifetime. And so God has taught us, and now we have a chance to walk it out. And even though we can't come together and worship like we like to, we can at least continue the ministry of the gospel going forward through our faithfulness and our obedience. So thank you for that. Um, I've never been through a crisis of this magnitude before. Most of you haven't either, not of this kind. And I do know this, because of God's faithfulness to teach us and train us, we've been being prepared 
for something just like this. And through our faithfulness to God, we're going to demonstrate that the message of the gospel continues to go forward, even through a worldwide pandemic um, crisis that's touching everyone in this world. So let us be open and obedient to God through our giving, and let us make sure that people continue to hear the gospel message in the days ahead. Thank you so much for being a part of the, our church family. We're glad to call you family. God bless you. We're so glad that you are with us today, that we're here together as Cornerstone. Uh, it is an interesting situation we find ourselves in, but I'm so thankful that you were able to connect with you wherever you are. Uh, you can find us on, on all the social media platforms, as Annie said earlier, cornerstoneaz.org. Uh, you know, go check us out as, as people are home, having a little bit more time to, to check on those things. You know, follow with us. We send out uh, lots of different updates of things that are happening through the week, this past week. We sent a video on our YouTube page as well as our Facebook page uh, from Rosie, our administrator, who gave a lots of different resources that could be a benefit and a blessing to your life. So let me encourage you to go on and check that out and let it be a blessing to you. I want to take an opportunity to say thanks. Thanks to all of these guys who you can't see that I can see that make this possible. It's our tech team. It's people like uh, Joel who, who serve behind the scenes every single week on Sundays, on the weekends, and even through the week and making things happen. Thank you. It's my friends like Izzy who's behind this camera in front of me who do things like making all these things possible for us to share with you and with his crew, with Jenny, with the girls. Uh, it's my, my friend uh, James who's up in the sound booth and my friend Jeremy who's running the slides for us today. It's all of these guys who do such an amazing job. And you can show the picture of yourself, Jeremy. It's okay, man. <laughs> That's when you're driving the thing. You can do that. Uh, I want to say thanks also to Heidi and to our team. They've done such a great job in leading us in worship uh, in, in just the presence of God. We're still thankful for them for using their gifts and abilities, for coming in. As most people are locked in and locked home, they're coming in, a few of us here, to make this thing happen. We're very blessed to have them doing so. Uh, I hope you're online, as I referenced earlier. Pastor had a great, has some great moments that he's been sharing with us on video. You can go, and he, he's reading from the Bible, and he's, he's talking about those points. And just a, just a word in, in, of blessing and praying over us. We're very thankful for that. This past Saturday, yesterday, we actually had another kids' church, a Saturday morning kids' church. Pastor Cindy and the team did such a great job in making that a reality. I want to say thanks to her. I want to say thanks to Celeste for being one of the ones that's reading our Bible stories and loving on our kids. And I have to say thanks to Pastor Angus. He does such a great job. And this picture is one of the, the more refined pictures of him during kids' church because half the time he's wacky wally wearing an incredible outfit. And so I'm not going to ruin it. You have to go on and look for yourself to see what that's about. But 
it's, it's a great chance for our kids to be able to worship. They're seeing some of our kids, some of our pastor kids that are, that are, that are participating as the kids in the, in, the, uh, in, in the audience, and they get to worship with them. And so I saw some great videos, uh, our friends like Serenity and different ones that are, that are out there dancing and having a great time. Very thankful that our kids from Cornerstone and abroad are actually getting a chance to worship God together. So thank you for that. Thank you for, for helping our kids worship God. You know, for me, it's kind of a milestone week. Uh, I hit 40, 40 years old. Thank you to all those who said, uh, said happy birthday. I'm very appreciative of it. You know, we had these great plans, Celeste and I. We were like, oh, man, we should redeem our air miles. We've had some stacked up from traveling around the world. And maybe we should go to New York or maybe we should go to L.A. or to San Francisco, some cities that we love. And none of that happened. Uh, we were like, hey, we can go out to dinner. No, we can't. We could go nowhere. So the extent of my birthday was me going and jumping in my pool. That was as far as I got. So that, that was about it for the big 4-0. But there is some pretty cool things that are a mile marker for 1980 and for those years. I love this graphic that's shared. It's uh, those things that came out the year that you were born. Some big things happened. Uh, for all of you who are news junkies, CNN kicked off the year I was born. So it's been around 40 years. Uh, and Pac-Man became a thing. That's pretty cool. Uh, you also can see some stuff that's here. Um, you know, it, it's the, the TV show Magnum P.I., so all those guys still rocking that amazing mustache and that chest hair popping out the, out the middle. Congrats to you. We know where you got that and that idea. So 40 years, that style's been rocking, so it's been pretty good. Uh, we praise God for, for that, and I thank him for the, the blessing upon my life. It's, it's amazing. I was one of those young guys that definitely did not think I'd make it to 40, so I counted a blessing uh, his hand on my life. Now, we've been talking about um, COVID-19, the coronavirus, and its effect on us. It's a huge thing. I mean, everyone around the world has been affected by this pandemic. And it's a serious thing, but I do like that some people are, are still having fun with it. My friend John shared this meme. He said, having trouble forcing yourself to say, stay home, shave your eyebrows off, <laughs> which is a solid one. I really like that one for all those who are self-conscious. The other side of that, though, is that you're at home and therefore you're fighting with the refrigerator. I need to practice social distancing from the refrigerator. I think there's a few people out there that are feeling that kind of strong. Yesterday, my family and I got a chance to go out and have a walk. Uh, it was great. We did cross a few people. Everybody kind of kept their distance, and everybody waved and said good morning. But it was great just to get out and, and spend time together, just walk and talk and, and, and just talk about all these things that are going on. I'm very thankful. I'm thankful that we have teachers that are reaching out to students like my kids, and, and there are people that are, are making the extra effort so that they feel loved and they are getting some schooling and being challenged. I was talking to my kids about it, and what I love about them, unlike the, all the adults I talk to, is that they're not, not all of their vocabulary is, is just all about the virus. They're talking about life and fun and cool things, and I, I'm, I'm so appreciative of that, that they still have that opportunity to be kids, and they still have that opportunity not to be in that stressful environment. But I know numbers of kids around the world who do not have that luxury and so I'm very blessed in that we have that still for our kids, even in the midst of this crazy situation, that they're still having fun and still being optimistic about the future, and the Lord be praised for that. I will say this, watch out the news that you get. Um, it can be daunting and it can be scary. You never know whenever they do graphs like this, what it really means. This graph actually adds up to over 170%. So really watch out whenever people are trying to give you information. Before you start to just spout it as fact, really look to see where it's coming from. Uh, I like this picture. My friend Tommy took it of a sunset at the back of his house. Just God painting the sky here in Arizona. Man, what a blessing to take that moment to reflect and to say thanks. That has been a blessing about this is that we've been forced to slow down, forced to take moments of reflection. It's scary for a lot of people because they don't want to think about what's going on. But it also puts us into a different perspective thinking about eternal things. And we're going to talk about that here today in just a minute. Now, we're not having services here at the church. Um, we're having them online, and for the foreseeable future, it's probably true. Uh, stay tuned week to week as we'll have that information for you as whether or not we'll be having 
uh, services here at our location just based on uh, what they're, they're telling us uh, from the government officials and so on. We want to be in compliance with them. We want all of our people to feel safe and healthy, and so we're very thankful we can come and meet together in this way. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we, we, we're very much aware that this thing is not yet tamed. I was watching yesterday uh, different news sources, and one of them had an interview uh, with Bill Gates, who he and his wife, Melinda, have actually donated a, a large, large sum of money, I think $100 million, to try to combat this virus. Uh, he was sharing and talking with some of the pundits that were there, and the, the numbers are actually astonishing of the people that have been affected, the cases of people that have already passed, and it's climbing. So I want to say to you, please stay safe. We're praying for you. We're praying that his, the Lord's hand would be upon you. I'm thinking of my friend Greg the, today, uh, Greg Mundus. He was uh, the leader and my boss as I was in world missions. Uh, Greg is, is a great man. He's a man who loves people. He loves people from around the world. And he's a great person who wants everyone to know the love of Jesus Christ. Um, Greg, I, I've known him for, for over a decade personally. Every time I would see him, he would call Celeste and I by name. It is incredible. He had 2,600 people that were a part of his organization he was responsible for, and he still would call us by name. Man, what an incredible ability, and what an incredible man. He, just a few weeks ago, was uh, infected by the virus. He's been fighting for his life, and it looks like has turned a corner, and we're very thankful for that. Not just him, but numbers of other leaders in the Assemblies of God World Missions office, friends of ours that live across the world that have been affected. We have friends of it that are affected in Europe, different places that are affected right now. And, and it's a real time for us to stop and to pray and to think of them. And, you know, uh, that's, that's something that's been heavy on my heart. A number of our, of our people are in those key, they're in those key positions where they have to serve. They're in medical places. They're, they're serving at, at stores. They're serving in different places where they can't stay away from the crowds. So we want to pray for them as well, that they would experience the safety of God. Um, you know, let's join together. Let's pray today over people like Greg, over those who are serving, that God's hand would be with us. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, just to come together. Lord, just to praise you, Lord, for you. we know that you are our source. God, we thank you, Lord, for being there in the midst of this craziness. Lord, it says that things will fall upon the just and the unjust. Lord, and so I pray for people like my friend Greg. God, I pray, Lord, that you would heal him. Lord, that he would experience the divine. Lord, we, we're thankful for medicine. We're thankful for doctors and for nurses and for, for medical uh, knowledge. But, Lord, we also ask for your healing touch upon him. Lord, as we read in Scripture, we, we can call upon you and ask for healing. So, Lord, we ask for that today upon him, upon all these others that have been affected with this virus. Lord, and we also ask a, a, a hedge of protection, a protecting around all those that are serving in these vital areas that are in stores, Lord, that are medical personnel, Lord, even people like my mother-in-law, Lord, that yesterday is, is doing tests on the virus itself. Lord, I pray, God, that you would have your hand upon them, Lord, that you would touch them and you would keep them safe, Lord, that they would see your hand with them, God, and guide them. Lord, speak to their heart. Lord, we ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. You know, so we are continuing our series called The Red Letters. The Red Letters is actually a, a nod to, in print Bibles, the words of Jesus were typically shown in red because they're, they're of that importance. And so as we highlight some of the things that Jesus has said over these past weeks, it's been something that's been a challenge to our lives and transformative as we've applied them. Uh, we start out with this concept and question of who is Jesus? Jesus to us, to Christ followers, to Christians, is the Messiah. He's the, the chosen one, the one that came and is the son of God who came and lived a life, a sinless life here on earth. He, he did so, and then he went as a sacrifice for us all to the cross, but he didn't stay dead. And on the third day, he rose again. That's where our faith is as Christ followers. We believe Jesus is who he says he is. We believe the scripture and when it talks about his life and the things he said. And so we try to live our lives by the words he says. So as we're Christ followers, it's much like this image here. We're on a journey with Christ. We haven't finished. We're not, we're not stopped, all of us, until we meet Jesus face to face or on that journey. So let me encourage you today to apply this word to your life. 
uh, you know, Pastor, he kicked off the series with this idea of being born again and talked about it from the perspective of Jesus talking in Cornelius. And as he did, he talked about how we are born again by the work of the Spirit. It's not something that we can earn. There's nothing that we can do to live a good enough life. We have to accept the sacrifice of Christ on our behalf. We have to be born again spiritually. That's what it means. And it's hard for, for some of those who are more of religious leaders because they, they couldn't get their mind around this idea that they couldn't earn it. They always thought that sacrifice earned it when it actually was the sacrifice was taking their place by the grace of God. Jesus comes to be a sacrifice for us all once and for all. And so that is the powerful thing that happens there. So as Christ starts to talk to us about this idea, it's what we hear in the word of God. It's that famous piece of John 3 that all of us know well. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And then it continues on and says, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, the world that the world through him might be saved. We say amen to that. Uh, I continued on with the same thing, talking about the golden rule and forgiveness. It really came at an opportune time as people started to treat others a little bit, uh, a little bit in the way that they shouldn't be treated. And we talked about how Christ talks to us the exact opposite. And he says this in scripture, so whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them. We talked about being the difference out in society of being the love of Christ, even whenever people are not lovely to us, and how that can be a challenge. We continued on and talked about how God sees us as having great value. You have value, therefore do not be anxious. And that was something that was important to us. And it talks about in scripture how God knows about the sparrows. And if he knows about the sparrows, he definitely knows about you. He knows about you and that numbers of hair on your head, and he cares about your situation. And it talks to us about not being anxious. Do not be stressed out because what will it do for you? It won't add anything to your life. Instead, let tomorrow be stressed for tomorrow and instead rest in the peace of God. And so we, we can take that idea and we walk forward with it. Last week, we shared about this idea of being salt and light. It says in scripture about what it means for us to be salty, for us to have value, and also to be the light of the gospel to the world. It says in scripture, for you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people put a lamp and uh, light a lamp and put it under a basket. We talked about this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. It's that idea that we are going to be the gospel. We're going to be the love of God to people around us. We're going to be those that make a difference by the love of God flowing through us and not hiding it, but letting it be our testimony to the world around us. That's the challenge we have, especially in this trying time when people are freaking out and everything is, is a fight. Instead, they would see the peace of God upon your life. Now today, we're continuing with that same series, The Red Letters, and we have this concept, build upon the rock. Build upon the rock the rock. If you have your Bible, your tablet, your phone, I'm going to ask you to open this morning to Matthew 7, where we're going to pick up with this story. It says this, then everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against the house and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Let's pray over this word today. Jesus, we just ask that you would illuminate your words in our heart. Lord, that it would spark something in us of action. Lord, and it, we would hide it there. Lord, that it would be something that drives us forward in the days ahead. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, the commonality in this story, usually it's focused on the two characters. It's the wise man and the foolish man. But in reality, the thing that really equals them is the storm. The storm is, is what we expect. It's the real catalyst for this story. 
Before the storm, there was just a guy with a house on the rock and a guy with his house near the beach. Uh, for some, they would be like, man, the guy on the beach, he doesn't have to walk up to the rocks. He's got the better gig. He's getting to do what he wants. But the storm is the great equalizer here. Now, when I was a student uh, in university, uh, I loved to surf. I was an Arizona kid. I went to California, learned to surf. We'd go out every morning, get up at 5 a.m. and paddle out into the waves. Even when it was nothing, uh, we would go out to surf. But actually, a few years later, a few years into university, El Nino, this giant storm came, and it was making these huge waves on the beach. Uh, there was this imagery of these people taking pictures of it. I mean, it's massive. This thing was, it was incredible. These waves were breaking over the jetty, which sticks out of the water like 20 feet or something. And these massive waves would be blown across the jetty. And, and of course, as surfers, we were so excited. We're like, the waves we've been waiting for are here finally. So we go and we paddle out into this stuff. Now, where I was at in Newport Beach, uh, there's these jetties that, that come out to the water that are made of rocks. And typically, you would catch a wave in between those jetties and surf it in towards the beach. But these waves were so massive, they were breaking way out beyond the jetties. And so you'd have to really watch it, because even if you caught the wave, you could be washed directly into the rocks. There was this devastating power that was there. And you can see this picture of this guy surfing. I think it's in Huntington right there along the beach or maybe in Newport as well uh, around Blackie's at 28th Street where you're catching these massive waves and they had such power. There was no way that you could be held back from them. And in fact, trying to duck dive these waves was almost impossible. There was this, this massive power that was there that you had to have respect for. And if you haven't been in the ocean, then you might not have that same perception of what it means to have respect for the sea. You know, I have some friends even today that are actually living on a sailboat. So hi to Gary and Laura, wherever you guys are when you see this video. But they're sailing around the world. And, and them and many like them have a true respect for the ocean because the ocean can, can put you in a dangerous place very quickly. You can see in this next image, the, the sea, man, the sky can turn black and, and, those, and that, that, that sea can pick up. Those waves can come out of nowhere. And you really have to know what you're doing to stay safe. So when we read this story, we see this storm that comes at their lives and it comes at both of them. At both of their lives, it comes at them. And, and it really has a big difference in what happens between the two of them. Uh, you know, as growing up, we heard this story and we'd see images like this uh, in Bible stories where, uh, you know, it's, it's giving the depiction of the two of them. In fact, one of the, my favorite things we did in missions work early on when I was a teenager was uh, we did a skit called The Wise Man and the Foolish Man about building your house on the rock. And my, my cousin Eric and my friend Ashley did such an amazing job with this skit. And it made me laugh every time, even though I, you, normally I was the narrator. Uh, it would be one of those things where they just did this amazing skit, and it was, it was great because it showed the foolishness of the foolish man, then it showed the wisdom of being the wise man. And, you know, it had little songs that went with it. There was these little songs that were there about uh, the wise man building his house upon the rock, and you would do it multiple times, and we would do actions with it and, and really get the kids involved. And it's funny because we're trying to give them these life lessons without them maybe even understanding what it means. And so today we want to break that down a little bit, first talking about the wise men. So the wise men, we see it here in scripture, it picks back up, it says, everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like the wise men. We've been talking about often about what it means to be more like Jesus, about us having the character of Christ, having the fruit of the spirit as we read about in Ephesians come out of our life because we have been working on our character to be more like Jesus Christ and here's the thing, just like that picture of us on a journey with Christ, we know that we're not finished. We are always in process. And we can wake up and have a bad morning and want to pick up all of these things that we've already dealt with. So we have to watch it. We have to be diligent that every day we give those things over to God. Every day we're having the mind of Christ. That every day we're asking for more of the Holy Spirit to guide us, to direct us, so that we can live according to Christ. It's really about having an eternal mindset. You know, we could actually make that parallel between wisdom and eternal thinking. You know, as we look here, the key things that jump out is be like the wise man who built his house on the rock. He was thinking about things not just in proximity to the niceness of the water on a calm day, but he's thinking about having stability for the future. He's thinking about having something that matters with longevity. 
He's having an eternal mindset. And spiritually, that's where we need to be. We need to be those that are thinking about not just temporal things, but eternal things that make a difference. Living our life, not just for the moment, but for eternity and making those kind of decisions. And I'll say this is not an easy thing. It's definitely a challenge to us. And, and that's why whenever this storm came, it didn't wreck the wise man's life. In fact, it, his house did not fall because it had been founded. His life, his house had been founded on the rock, which the parallel to us is to Jesus Christ. His life had been built on Jesus. His life had been built on eternal things. And because of it, his life was not wrecked whenever the storm came. Now, it doesn't mean that his house wasn't hurt, but the thing was, it didn't fall. And it's one of those things where he was able to weather the storm and destruction did not befall him. Now, we're talking about that storm surge and, and that idea that's there and that respect that we need to have for it because it can come at any time. It, it might have already been here before this virus hit everyone. I knew many, many people that were already having their own personal storm. Maybe it was a disease or maybe it's the loss of a loved one. Maybe it's the loss of a job or a transition that happened or having problems with adult children or grandchildren. And it, it's a real thing. That's a storm in your life. And no one can tell you any different. The real question is, where is the footing of your life? Is it in Christ or is it in something else? It talks about here in Matthew 6, there's another parallel to this. And, and Jesus says here, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Neither where moth or rust destroys, where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Now, we know because of social media and things like YouTube that everybody loves the glamorous lifestyle. I mean, you can't get away from it. It's the, the idea of jet set people with amazing money and good looks and, and cars and all the things. I mean, it's one of those things that people... They just, they're attracted to it, like moths to flame. They're, they're there. They're for it. And here's the deal. Having any one of those things is, is not bad. It's whenever that becomes what you build your life around. It's whenever your value gets tied to what car and what things you have. That's when everything is messed up. Whenever you don't tie to those things, those things are just a blessing to your life. Now, I'll say if you start buying supercars, you better be giving a lot to the poor. But that's another story. You know, today, now we're, we're hit with this reality that, you know, some of these other things aren't as important because the store shelves are empty. Most of us aren't farming. We don't have our own sources of food. It, we rely on this system living in cities to, to be able to eat, to be able to provide for our family. So these things start to really make a difference. It really starts to hit home about the pressures that are around us. And it can, it can start to pull on us because it is a temporary thing, but we do need to watch out for our family. So there's a stress, there's a tension that's there. You know, it's, it's funny because for years, you know, you'd hear about these prepper people and they're, they're on TV and all this other stuff too. And they'd have, you know, they wouldn't have empty shelves. They'd have whole rooms full of food. And, you know, some people are talking about how now they're, you know, they're, they're laughing because they're, they're preppers. But even the preppers, I don't think they, I don't think they stored up toilet paper. So I think even they are in trouble on this one. I think that, you know, they might have all the food and canned goods to go, which is great. But I think, you know, they might be having a problem unless they have a bidet installed at their house. The real thing is crazy. Uh, my mom and others have seen it where a pallet of toilet paper would be brought out to a store and people just, they just dive on it. You know, like a, like a pack of wild dogs on meat or something crazy, just like devouring the stuff, taking it out. As fast as it comes in, a pallet is gone. And there's this fear that drives those actions. That and, you know, a real need for toilet paper for the bathroom. So it is a little bit tricky. When we talk about the foolish man, the foolish man here in this parallel is actually one that builds his house on the sand. It talks about there, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them. So Jesus is talking about the things he's been, been telling them, the way to live your life. If you don't do them, you're like this foolish person. This foolish person who builds their house on the sand. And all of us who have ever bought a house, we know that one of the most important things is the foundation of your house. If the foundation of your house is off or broken, then the rest of your house will eventually fall. And it will because the thing that it's built upon is not solid. 
Now, sand, I mean, everyone knows that sand, it will, it will move away as soon as the water comes. And it's not a, a firm foundation. It's not a solid thing. So if we build our lives on something that's not solid, whenever the storms of life come, they're going to destroy our lives. If you're like the foolish man who builds his house on the sand, you'll see the destruction that comes. It says, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. It's because the person that built their house on the sand, they were thinking with a temporary mindset. They were thinking about just the things of the revelry of the day. They weren't having eternal things in mind. They weren't thinking about a spiritual life. And that's the parallel that we see here. We see this idea of someone building their house up on a hill and we see the idea of sandcastles that are, that are easily washed away by the sea. We don't want to have our lives be like that sandcastle, be like that house built on the sand where it destroys so quickly. It says here in Scripture in Matthew 7 where Christ is talking to us about those things that we need. Now, he knows we need them. And so it says it here in Scripture, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives and the one who seeks finds and the one who knocks, it will be opened. It continues on and it's talking about good gifts. He says, For which of you, if his son asks him for a loaf of bread, will give him a stone? If he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then who are evil know how to get good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? So if you're asking God for help, if you're asking God for provision, he wants to give you those good gifts. Now, we don't pretend to know the heart of God, but what we do about the mind of God and all of the deity of who he is, but what we do is we know his character. We know that he's a good father. We know he's the one that provides for us. If we, if me, as a person who's broken, who has evil in my heart, if I want to do all these good things for my kids, for my son, for my daughters, then how much more would God want to do that for me and for you, for us on our behalf? Yeah, there's this song that's been rattling around in, 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 my, in my office and, and even at the house. We were singing it this weekend. Uh, it's called The Blessing, and it was written by uh, Carrie Job and Cody Carnes, and and, and some of the crew that's there, and, and they're singing this song, and it's, it's really a simple song, but it's so profound, some of the lyrics that are there. The, one of the things says is, may his favor be upon you, and a thousand generations, and your family, and your children, and their children, and their children. This idea that it goes way beyond just us in this moment, but that the God's blessing will be upon all the generations, all your posterity going forward, that his hand will be upon them. And as I was worshiping to that song this week, man, it just got me emotional thinking about how God will help us through this storm and every other storm that's coming because he wants to bless us and our family going forward. Now, the storm is a real thing. We see parallels even in Jesus' life. He and his disciples got on this boat there, and, and they were together after he was doing some ministry. And this storm started to, to come up on the sea where they were. And we see this imagery here. It actually picks up in Matthew 6, where it's telling the story in verse 23. It says, when he got into the boat, his follows disciple, followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves and he was asleep. And they went and woke him saying, save us, Lord, we are perishing. And then it continues on. And it says, and he said to them, why are you afraid, you of little faith? And he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled saying, what sort of man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? That, that phrase that's there that's so challenging to us is, why are you afraid? Man, whenever we start having an eternal mindset and thinking about stuff outside of just a temporary stress we're going through, a temporary storm, we see the, the mind of Christ. Jesus is in the middle of the storm on the boat, and he's worn out from doing ministry, and, and, and they're like, we're going to die, and he just gets up and is like, hey, waves, shut it down, shh. And as we see this imagery that's here painted, you could, you could see the stress that's upon all of them. And, and Jesus is just kind of waking up like, what? What are you doing? Why are you so stressed out? Why is your world falling apart? 
Don't let it fall apart. I am with you. And that's the thing is that Jesus is right there in the middle of the storm. You know, that wave is coming. The storm is real. It's, it's not a fake thing. It's not in our minds. But Christ is with us. Jesus is with you. And Jesus calms the storm. So that's the thing that's a takeaway for us today is that Jesus is the one that calms the storm. So we look back and we recap the things we've seen today. The first thing is that we are to be wise, that we are to have an eternal mindset, that we are to build on the rock, build our lives on the rock of Jesus Christ, on his foundation of his teaching, because we know that Jesus is with you. He's with me. He's with us. Now I'm going to invite our worship team to come back up and they're going to help us today. But as we do, let me challenge you with this question. It's a question for all of us that all of us have answered. But the question is this, have you embraced Jesus? Jesus comes to us and he says some important things. Whenever we look at the cross, we look at this symbol of forgiveness. We look at this symbol of sacrifice and it's on our behalf. It's something that he went and paid for. It wasn't cheap. He paid for it with his life. But he did it so that we could be reconnected to the Father. He was a holy sacrifice for a holy God. It says in Scripture, in Romans 10, Paul writing to the church, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And that is is what we have done. We've placed our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ. You can do the same today. And that's our prayer for you, that you would say, Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life. Lord, I believe you are who you say you are. Forgive me of my sin. I wanna live different. I wanna live where you are the Lord of my life. Come into my life, forgive me of my sin so I can live a new life with you. And if you pray a prayer like that, today is that day of decision for you. It's that day where you are born again spiritually. And we rejoice with you because that's a huge decision to make. It will change everything for you. It will change your whole life. Let's pray today as we pray over these things. That the Lord will be with us and help us as we go through these trying times. And then we're going to go into worship and come back with a blessing for you. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. Lord, how you speak to us. Lord, you ask us to be wise. Lord, to do what you have taught us to do. That is what it means to be wise. Lord, that we would be those wise people. Lord, who walk according to your will, according to your ways, according to your teaching. Lord, that we would have an eternal mindset, not a temporary one. Lord, that we would see things as you see them. That it would be something that would change the stress that we're going through because we know that you are with us in the middle of it. Lord, that we want to build our lives on the rock. Lord, that we don't want to be held back from it. Lord, we want to go after you. So, Lord, that is our prayer today. Lord, because we know that you are with us, we are not alone. So, Lord, we stand in your grace today. Lord, and we worship you with everything we have. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's worship together. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Creation, I'll sing praise to the King of Kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you.
his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Lord, I pray a blessing upon your church, your people. Lord, that we would be wise and we would build upon the rock. We would live our lives full of your love so that others can see it. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Know this, we love you very much here at Cornerstone. Have a great week.